I'm JP. I'm Francis. And we're going to talk to you about our paper for the Academy of Management Annals, Incumbent Adaptation to Technological Change, the Past, the Present, Future of Research on Heterogeneous Incumbent Response. The basic story that we've been looking at here is the idea that there's lots of research on, uh, te on technological change and how incumbent firms are different and how they respond to technological change. So moving beyond the idea of just incumbents versus entrants, but looking for reasons why some incumbent firms do well and some incumbent firms do poorly. And what we're trying to do here is to pull these pieces together because they've been relatively disconnected. Now, what we're going to offer is a systematic review of the literature. Uh, and our goal is to bring to offer a model that helps them understand the, the key challenges and barriers that organizations face when trying to adapt to technological change. And then in order to talk about the literature, we're also going to offer a model of categorization for different types of technological change so we can understand what is and is not comparable across different types of change. The existing literature has focused on finding the antecedents to successful and unsuccessful adaptation of incumbents. And the question is how, how we can pull together these multiple papers that have taken different theoretical angles to study this phenomenon. And in reviewing these papers, we try to bring in these antecedents together to paint a more, more of a holistic picture of how the ante antecedents may work together. What we offer is a model that we call the barrier model of technological change. And we identify three barriers to adaptation namely the barriers to acquisition, the barriers to assimilation, and the barriers to reconfiguration. So in thinking about the model, we can conceptualize the organization as a collection of products. And each individual product is a collection of multiple, one or more technologies, and one or more complementary assets that are required to commercialize the product. And what happens when technological change affects an industry, at the very least, one or more of the technologies that are in, encompassed in a product become devalued. They become less valuable in the external environment, and the firm has to find ways to seek replacements, a, a new type of technology, a new solution to offer in order to facilitate uh, the commercialization of that product. Now, there's multiple stages firms can go through in terms of thinking through how they're going to potentially adapt to technological change. The first is to recognize that it might be the case that when a certain technology, in this case maybe T1, is devalued, the firm may already possess an alternative technology, T3 in this case, within the firm. And so there the challenge becomes to migrate that technology from one part of the firm into another part of the firm. But in that case, the firm already possesses the, the required technology and thus the first stage of possession. The second stage recognizes that if the firm doesn't possess the technologies that are required to commercialize the product, to, to bring the product to market internally, it may have to look externally to acquire those technologies. It may have to do that through M&A, licensing, hiring, any number of ways to try and do it. But searching through the external environment to try and find the appropriate technology and then try and bring the technology inside the firm. Now, when the firm tries to bring this ex external technology in, it faces two potential types of barriers. The first is around acquisition, the idea that there may be external impediments to the organization, either through competition or the role of external stakeholders, that makes it difficult for the firm to acquire the technology externally and bring it into the firm. Even if the firm is able to acquire the technology, it, 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 it faces challenges around assimilation. This is the classic not invented here syndrome, where the organization's uh, own actors resist bringing the new technology in and incorporating it in, into the product because it changes the balance of power or the structure of the organization in some important way. And then whether the, te the, te the technology is coming from outside the firm or is even a technology the firm already possessed inter inside the firm, there are barriers to reconfiguration where the organization is going to be forced to rethink how the different pieces fit together and how the, the component aspects of the product are kind of are, are created and commercialized in order to successfully bring the product to market. And so our, our, our overall story is that in, incumbent firms who are looking to adapt to technological change need to overcome these, these barriers, this barrier to acquisition, assimilation, and reconfiguration, potentially with the recognition that they may possess key elements of the technology already. In the second part of our paper, we offer a classifying scheme to better understand the specific characteristic of technological changes that have been studied in the existing literature. There have been multiple types of technological changes that have been studied by the existing literature. They are 
They range from biotechnology and drug discovery, digital technology and photography, plasma to LCD change and flat panel display, generation changes in disk drives, generation changes of semiconductor lithographic equipments. The problem is that all these papers, all, all these research um, bundle or classify all these different technological changes all under the same umbrella of radical technological change. What we call out in our paper is that these different technological changes should be given due attention and we should try to understand the different characteristics that may be important to understand the unique factors that, that play into the heterogeneity among incumbent firms and their ability to adapt to the, these particular technological changes. A thought experiment can illustrate why it is important to understand or distinguish between these different types of technological changes. So consider these two types of two firms, firm A and firm B. They are identical in all aspects. So they possess the same technological knowledge, T1, and they also possess the same complementary assets, C1. Now they are hit with different technological changes. Firm A is hit with technological change delta A, which requires technology 2 and complementary asset 1. And firm B, on the other hand, is hit with a technological change, delta B, which requires technology 1 and complement, complementary assets 2. Although firm A and firm B is, are identical in all aspects that we can observe, it is reasonable to assume that they will have different ability to adapt to different technological changes which require different technological knowledge or different complementary assets. What we usually observe in different papers that have been studied so far is that they focus on the heterogeneity heterogeneity among different firms. So papers look at different firms, so firm A and firm B are now different, now possessing different technological knowledge and also possessing different complementary assets. Each individual paper usually looks at one type of technological change, in this case delta A. Delta A requires technological knowledge 2 and complementary assets 1. In this hypothetical example, firm A is the only firm that possesses complementary assets 1 and also the technological knowledge one. But what we're going to conclude from this is that complementary assets one is important to understand a firm's ability to adapt to technological any technological change because you're only studying technological change delta A. So in order to improve the comparability across different settings, we can understand to what extent findings may generalize from one context to another. Our argument is that Future existing and future researchers need to do a better job of describing the institutional context around the technological change that they're studying. So we need to understand to what extent there's an actual impact on the core technological knowledge and what is the nature of that impact on technological knowledge. What exactly is the impact on complementary assets and how are they being preserved or devalued? To what extent are there impact on external actors, suppliers, customers, other players in the ecosystem that may be relevant to the ability of the firm to, to adapt and change. And last, we need to understand something about the era of ferment, the duration, the level of uncertainty, the types of investments that firms might be asked to make, because without this type of knowledge, we may lose key aspects of the, uh, the underlying uncertainty that affects the decision making of organizations. And so our general argument is that in order to help facilitate comparability across studies as we try to accumulate knowledge in a more scientific perspective, we need to have a better definition, better understanding, and better classification of the types of technological changes being studied in, these research, in this research. Hopefully this has given you a perspective on what we're trying to accomplish in this paper, and you'll check out the paper in the, in the annals uh, this spring, 2018, and we hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us.